Well, I am super excited to be joined by the creator of Phil Singer Games and the writer of Champions of the Galaxy Origins 2138, Tom Phil Singer. Tom, welcome to our second annual Game Edition chat. Hey, it's great to be here. Look forward to it. Yeah, I was I was very happy when you reached out and you were like, hey, you want to do this again? And I was like, heck yeah, let's do it again. Oh, yeah, I, I enjoy talking about the, the new stuff, especially. Yeah, well, and especially with somebody with the great interview skills and acumen and knowledge of the game listen, as Grant. I'm not going to say you're wrong. I'm going to agree <laughs> with everything you just said. Um, so far. <laughs> so far, so far. Well, it's great to have you here, and I'm super excited to talk about Origins 2138. And um, I, I just there's there's so many questions I want to ask, and I, I do want to go uh, character by character to get your thoughts and feelings on on all eleven of the new cards. Um, but I would love to talk about uh, the the handbook just to start off with, because we're looking at the cover here. Um, this is like a really great layout, and and Tom Rickard did the layout for the handbook this time, right? Yes, Tom came with uh, the, you know, the way we work is uh, just, unless I have something specific, just give me your idea. And I liked it. I rearranged all the characters so that the top would be all new vibe and the bottom would be non-new vibe. But other than that, the, the 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 design layout was by Tom. That's where Tom Rickard. That is. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's really great. It's really like a splashy cover, and just gives you a great overview of of everything that's coming inside. Yeah. Well, uh, let's. I, I want to ask you more about the story, but I think we'll go through characters first, and we'll get a little bit of the of the story as we go along. Um, but the the first character, I'm not going in alphabetical order here, but I wanted to talk about Apex. Uh, the new gladiator that has uh, come on the scene. And um, yeah, I would just love to know your your creation process behind Apex and uh, why it was time to bring in such a big new gladiator. Well, you know, I don't think there's ever, um, I don't think there's ever a, a dearth of big new gladiators or there should never be. Uh, it's just part of our history. And it was time for the overmaster to move on Although that remains a mystery that will be um, solved soon, I hope. And then, uh, so I wanted, to, for the first time, we actually have a P1. Now, uh, we've talked about that ranking system as part of the game's history. Uh, a P1 is like their greatest physical specimen. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's their best wrestler. And, uh, you know, that person has to be trained and has to take some time to get better at their craft so you can tell by his card stats that when he really reaches his prime he's going to be extremely powerful he's already pretty powerful as is so but then i've also introduced a new element if siege is kind of becoming by default the new leader of the gladiators with the aether and overmaster being in a kind of a mysterious limbo state then you know, how does Apex feel about that? Because he's got the ego of a P1. As far as he's concerned, he's the top specimen. So I've, there's a door been opened for there to be perhaps a battle for the top at the Gladiator camp. Well, yeah, I had that in my notes, too, um, that, that, that there could be this friction between <laughs> the two of them. And I think that's really what makes the Aetherans kind of this intriguing thing, because this friction inside the group is not new. We've had it before. Uh, you know, we had a whole civil war where <laughs> they, they all fought each other. Um, and I just think that's uh, like it's a, it's a whole new level. They're not just these dominating guys who want to uh, guys and gals who want to take over planets they're also fighting amongst each other as well, well they're they're like a huge banana they're a planet banana republic you know i mean it's all about the most powerful leads and so there's going to be insurrections at the top there's going to be battles for the top uh and you'll see it in the gwf now fist isn't in that battle fist is more focused on wrestling and um i don't know if you'd call him a uh, what do they call a glue guy in sports? Sometimes a person who brings the team together. Yeah. I don't think he's that. 
He's just not openly fighting for the top spot the way the other two are. But knowing him, he might be knowing gladiators. He might be planning in the background, just waiting. Yeah, for his yeah, yeah. let them kill themselves and then I'll take over. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Well, uh, Apex is certainly a, a, a great new addition uh, to the Fed. Uh, next, I wanted to talk about Grandmaster, uh, the, the former godsend. And we do have some, um, you, you very graciously sent some uh, fun alternative art, which we'll look at in a second. But um, talk about uh, Grandmaster and, and his sort of change, because now he's, he's fighting on the side of right. At least he appears to be. Several years ago, when uh, Immortal God Sent left, I knew I wanted to explore the mortal version in a kind of an existential, almost Hamlet-like way in terms of who am I. Uh, you know, Hamlet had those famous lines, now I'm forgetting the most classic ones, that got to this basic idea of who am I. Well, it's funny because you say now read it, you saying this and then remembering what's in the handbook. He is kind of this brooding, walking around like I don't know to be or not to be. What is? Yes, know? there you go. Thank you. That yeah. is the question. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, he's got it legitimately. I mean, he was created and that's sort of mysterious, too. I've never really gone into his true origin story. But what we're assuming is he was created just to serve as a conduit. Once the immortal's gone, then what's left? And he's gone through a couple of years of wandering and he's come to his conclusions. Now, by the way, again, uh, I'm speaking for him, not knowing myself whether he's lying or not. Right. Uh, let's say this is what he would say, uh, that he has now found himself and he wants to be his own person. And I will say this when I play my own Fed, he's like a new character to me. I, I barely feel the old godsend. And yet all those old feuds are still there. And so I find him to be a, a compelling character to work with in my own promotion um, in the middle of just a bunch of stuff, including, you know, obviously against gladiators, against foundation. But he's also got Death Knight hanging around, demon godsend, people who aren't sure what to make of him and maybe don't believe him. So uh, anyway, uh, so this 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 has been developing slowly and then as you might have seen by the art i sent his or even his name came at the end yeah oh, it was retribution at this point because that's just a placeholder name you know until you can think of something else uh and so this was a start and it's just not the direction i wanted to go i wanted well what i wanted what we wound up with yeah yeah this I was like getting this better is, yeah yeah him rushing Kind of what I wanted, way. though, once I realized that Lady Godsend was, I, I call her uh, Lady Godsend, you know, I'm, it's kind of like I'm still in between Cleveland Indians and Cleveland Guardians. I'm still in between Godsend and Grandmaster in my own mind. <laughs> right. And uh, But I knew that once Lady Grandmaster was changing, too, I wanted them to have a back-to-back -back picture with each other. And, uh, you know, that you could place next to each other. And I like the way it turned out. And I love the lady. Don't You don't have to go to it now. But I love the way Lady Grandmaster turned out, too. Well, yeah, th that's the next uh, piece I have all queued up here. So, um, yeah, just and again, uh, I mean, touch, touch, stepping off of talking about the character here for a second, this artwork is just fantastic. And the way the, the two pieces kind of fit together is just a, a lot of fun. And um, I did want to ask Lady uh, Lady God said, Lady God said, Lady Grandmaster. Um, you know, I know that, like, and especially now, she's in in twenty one thirty eight. She's like devoted to him, and she's like, you know, I, I, whatever you need, or you know, what I'm, I'm with you. Um, do you ever see in the future, perhaps, exploring and establishing her own identity a little bit? Because she has been Lady Godsend and now Lady Grandmaster. Do you see her maybe, and not necessarily going away from him, but just uh, exploring a little bit more of her personality? It, it, there may, uh, I don't know. Let me just say first, I don't know. One of the things that's in her genetic code, she was created to serve him. Right. And so that's kind of all she knows. And so for her, ass assuming an identity with him is uh, feels comfortable. Now, whether she will prefer to break away from that at some point is, is an open issue. Yeah. For now, she's, I, I brought it up in the handbook, too. She remains a rather prim and proper, almost bougie type person underneath all this. And so 
That's why I wanted to introduce this idea that her and Killer Queen might be opposite personality types, but they still try to get along as best they can. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's she's a... I mean, her first card was such a dominant character in my Fed. I think she came in and right away won won the title. So I'm very excited to uh, explore. I've only had a few cards of, of 2138, so I'm excited to explore her a little bit more in this new persona. And you saw in my own promotion, she immediately won the singles title and the tag team title with Killer Queen. So she made a huge splash right out of the gate. Yeah. Let me ask. Let me ask you this. This is just more of a, a personal booking thing. When you're playing your Fed, uh, do you, you know, like is she did she go for the title right away, or do do like people who are in sort of the main event go for the title right away, or do you you kind of make them earn their keep a little bit before you give them those title shots? Yeah, I do. I do try to make them earn their keep. In the in the old days, in the nineties, I always used the GWF promoter rankings for my own fed ranking so if because i figure well you know a lot of promoters have done this so a lot of votes are sort of going into it so but then i kind of moved away from that and let it let it be based on what was going on in my own promotion lady godsend was scheduled to battle killer queen before in 2130, that was my last card I scheduled in 2137. I thought I would just carry that over with Lady Grandmaster because uh, that's cool. Let her, she earned it, let her go for the title. She just changed her name, is all. And it was a great storyline because then she won and started to get on a hot streak. And it really turned up the heat in that, you know, that war with the gladiators. Yeah. I liked it when it turned out that way. You never know when you book your last card. <laughs> and I always do it because I want to have some continuity because I know I'm going to forget a lot of things I did the previous year with the new year coming. Uh, I'm so glad that that was booked because it worked perfectly. Yeah. 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 It's always interesting. My, my, uh, you know, in 2137, the very last card of the year, uh, Overmaster was the, um, was the Galaxian champion. So in 2138, he's gone. So I'm like, okay, do I, have him stay until he loses and then he goes or i just what i did was i had him uh leave and just say oh i'm gonna give this to siege you know the siege is now the champion and then mm -hmm. diva's like well wait a minute we can't yeah. you can't you can't just do that and so i kind of worked that into a little storyline so it is always fun to see you know, uh, I mean, you know what's going to happen in the next year. But for those of us who, you know, it's a surprise when we read the book. It's always fun to, okay, how am I going to make this story work uh, now that this person is gone or whatever? Well, you know, I do that really as much as, as you do in a lot of ways. It's just a six-month interruption for me. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, another uh, a big comeback <clears throat> was Havoc. Um, and I, I wanted to ask about Havoc. When you're bringing back a character who's, you know, Havoc has had a pretty lengthy history um, in the GWF. How much of that history do you consider upon their return? Or is it just sort of the broad strokes when you're bringing him back? Uh, probably a little bit of both. Uh, I always look into what, when did the character leave? Why did the character leave? Who was the character's friends and enemies when that person left? And uh, I've always been wanting to bring back Havoc. I know that he's been a popular character and it was just a matter of timing. And there is a lot more in this story that is still to be revealed next time. Let me mention this to you. Uh, uh, again, um, we're, we're not doing this for the millions and millions who are waiting on the edge of their seats for this, but I do have uh, something to say that might interest some of our fan base. Sure. And that is, uh, the, I'm not sure yet, but next edition could be the fourth installment of Origins. That that now is a, a, a door that I may want to go through. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because um, I know you said that the and I think I had this a little bit later on, but I know when we last talked last year, you were like, oh, the big thing hasn't even happened yet. The big thing is coming in, in you know, the next edition. And I was just wondering if it was, if, if did that big thing happen or is that, are we just seeing still seeds of that and it may happen in the next one? Right. And then, but then 
uh, you know, I guess I shouldn't say anything more about it. it. This idea of transitions is tricky, depending upon the story you're trying to uh, tell. You know, I'll give you an example from comics. Um, the mo- one of the most famous comics in, in all t- of all time is the first Galactus and Silver Surfer stories in Fantastic Four, something like 45 or 46 or whatever number. I think it was 47 through 49, but whatever it is. So, but you read... The first of those three, when Galactus is introduced, the first half of that book is a transition from an earlier Inhumans storyline. It isn't over yet. It transitions literally halfway through the book to the Galactus story, and Galactus doesn't even appear until the last panel. So what I'm saying is, you know, sometimes these things are just not cut and dry. When one story starts, one ends. So that's where uh, this is at. Yeah, yeah, I, I total that's totally understandable. Um, uh, the next character we want to talk about is a Vizier, um, which is I think the first piece of artwork you teased us with uh, uh, on your Twitter feed when you posted it. And um, you know, Castellix, uh, at least in my fed, has been a super strong tag team, especially with their with their mechanic. Uh, you know, of, of getting a power for finisher or not getting fatigue uh, during tag matches. Um, did you? And there may be more to the story here that you can't answer, but did you think like, oh, these guys kind of need a manager now that they're not with the Dominion anymore? Or is there maybe more to this story with the Vizier coming in and, and the, you know, I guess, formation of the foundation? Yeah, there could be. What you're saying could be true. But um, when the thought came to me that Moog and Sentinel would be tired of other people fighting over their planet and that it's actually their planet. And now that the godsend to them facade ended, uh, they just simply want to get control of their own planet back. And I thought, okay, in order to elevate these two characters, who I like a lot, Moog and Sentinel, some great art there too. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to elevate them to take a stand against the gladiators and the liberators, um, I need them to, to have a little extra added in. And a manager I thought was a good, an old warrior of theirs. And uh, you might have seen, I didn't want him to be ridiculously old. And he was coming off the first time that that was drawn as kind of like Solaris, remember? (laughs) All right. Uh, (laughs) And I didn't want that. Uh, I wanted somebody who could kind of still hold his own a little bit. I I have actually been feuding him with Aethern Soldier because they're kind of on the same level. Yeah. And um, as a good, you know, opening matchup type thing. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I did want to elevate their stature a bit uh, by bringing them their own manager. Was there, um, I mean, the way, the way you kind of just talked right now, like he was always going to be this this warrior who who was a former warrior. Maybe he's not exactly what he used to be. Was was that always the point? It's like, he's going to be a manager, but he's going to be a wrestler too? Or was there some thought of like, oh, he's a manager, so he's going to have a manager chart on the back? Or was he always just going to be a, a wrestling manager? Yeah, I think he was always going to be a wrestling manager. Yeah. All right. Well, now let's uh, let's head into the new vibe, and we will start with Diva. Um, now, there's been a a lot of talk on the message boards and, and other Phil Singer Games discussion areas um, that sort of the new vibe storyline and the the um, the thoughts about you know what's going to be popular and how are we going to get ratings and all this stuff is sort of a comment on modern day wrestling. Are you watching modern day wrestling? Do you, do you still uh, check in every now and then on what's going on? I check in every now and then, like you said, yeah. not as much. It is not, I don't, I don't think it's a commentary on anything modern, really. I, I think it's, you could call it a commentary on an undercurrent that wrestling has always had, you know, where we're, we're trying to, uh, bring up ratings and I, I I guess I was consciously or unconsciously playing into the controversies of doing it that way, you know, where you are putting superficial things over, you know, actual genuine storylines, wrestling. Uh, so I would say that person could read into that for sure. Diva is uh, interesting kind of, she, you know, so you could present that in a villainous way. 
and make somebody over the top. Diva is more a complicated character. She just honestly thinks, like Cindy Lauper, if you made Cindy Lauper the person who runs your promotion. And, not, and I just thought of that comparison. I didn't think of that before. Yeah. Cindy Lauper is not good or bad. She's just who she is. And she has a certain mentality. Diva does too. She's a superstar. She's thinks she is being good for the business, but what she considers good for the business might stray into areas that a Lord Nexus wouldn't agree with, or even a Tharkis wouldn't agree with, because we've already stated that we're getting villains and heroes coming together on some of the issues. Right. So that opens the door. That's what I like when I'm laying. Suddenly it's kind of all wide open. She would just do things on a whim and that you could write your own storylines that way. Yeah. No, I've, I'm having a lot of fun, like working in little things in my write-ups of like, you know, if somebody has a brutal match and they're bleeding, I, I could say like, oh, Diva censored the bleeding because <laughs> yeah. she didn't yeah. think that the people who want, or, you know, kids who are watching would want to see that, you know, and it's yeah. just fun to work in those little things based on this character. Well, you know what I'm thinking of doing now? It, it'll sound ridiculous, but I think you'll appreciate the ridiculous here. Um, she was tricked into putting the basilisk into the spotlight in right. my promotion. <laughs> now, so she's like having to try to work with that. And one of the ways I haven't said this yet, I might not do it, is releasing bascula, basilisk um, dolls or uh, woody, stuffed animals. <laughs> uh, and I'd love to own one. I would take one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I might be able to help you. We'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk off off the uh, off the recording here, uh, but no, they, I would definitely get one too. Um, was Diva a character you had been planning on coming in for a while, or was she a new creation when you sat down to write this? She was planned. Uh, you know, the the details really needed working out. You know, in other words, you know, once you decide to go in this direction, because I thought the GWF naturally would go in this direction. There'd come a point where they don't want to be about politics all the time and about war. That makes sense to me that they would have a problem with that and want to change their image to something more positive and get more viewers that were turned off by those things. So to me, this, again, the, the GWF to me has its own natural progression that I just try to tap into. I love it. Uh, many have pointed out on the message boards that the word diva uh, means a type of celestial being or God that is sometimes good and sometimes evil. Could that, maybe you don't want to say too much, but could that be a hint as to as to diva's true nature? Well, you know, I, can't, I, I will give the answer of who knows, maybe we'll find out. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay yeah. tuned, everybody. Well, uh, another one of my favorite characters, uh, Bloody Mary, um, just just I love that it just defies any expectation of what you you know, like if you thought Bulldoze defied any expectation of what uh, a women's wrestler would be, you know, Bloody Mary really does that. Um, so talk about this character because this and we have some alternate art as well for this character um, that I can bring up. OK, so, uh, you know, the new vibe all, all have some sort of a chip on their shoulder. That was sort of what uh, Diva was going for. And I, I had stated that Bloody Mary's would be that the Aetherns attacked her planet. But I, I, then I, you know, like I, I wanted a hardcore woman wrestler. I just wanted somebody that was down and dirty. I read comic books. I see how female characters are portrayed, like the She-Hulk and stuff like that. You know, there's no limit, really, to what you can do. And then, then you have a gimmick idea. Bloody Mary. When you're trying to think, I, I knew I wanted a monster as hardcore person. Then the name Bloody Mary comes to me and I think, ah. And then it wouldn't leave me. It was so silly. And I don't know if silly is the right word. It's something that could possibly just not work at all. Bloody Mary. It's it's a drink. It's a, it's a marriage theme. It's combining a lot of bizarre elements. But boy, Daryl did a great drawing. And... Uh, and I thought, you know what, maybe this can work with this weird you're married to blood theme that she's bringing to it with her hardcore image. And I feel the same way you do. I, I really enjoy the character. It's a very unique one. Yeah, let's look at this uh, other art because I thought uh, this art was really 
interesting too and i love the moon behind her as well like it and it's not too far off from the original but here she just looks a little bit more humanoid as opposed to the kind of alien race she was before yeah i didn't i didn't want that veil just hanging on her head like that and i wanted something more monstrous an alien not as human an alien that's right now, let me ask you a question. Uh, one of the early uh, products that you made was the Countdown to the Big Day calendar. Hmm. Uh, is, is Bloody Mary uh, somehow influenced by that uh, Countdown to Your Wedding Day calendar? Was that subconsciously, you think? Well, if it was subconsciously, I wouldn't <laughs> be able to say. <laughs> but um, no, not consciously at all. Yeah. All right. Well, I just had to ask because I was like, oh, maybe. Now, uh, here's my favorite character in the new vibe uh, is I-Star. And I, what I love about him is he's, to me, he's sort of a throwback to Pulsar. Uh, that's kind of who I, I see when I, even the card art a little bit is like, oh, this really reminds me of Pulsar, of someone who could be very, very great, you know, in the future. Yeah, definitely. I, I want that. You know, um, we don't introduce people on the level of Pulsar now because <clears throat> I could but he would not be able to compete. We come to the Fed, say, I'm, I'm, I'm going for Tharkas and then get crushed by him every match. Wouldn't be very uh, enjoyable. But there is room for growth here. And he does represent the kind of character that I like, uh, that we all like, I think, in terms of variety, an innocent, nice, friendly, polite, hardworking, regular person who happens to be a wrestler and doesn't like Tharkis for legitimate reasons. And, you know, I, I think you might have seen in my promotion, I'm really happy to say that he won the tag belts as the deal busters with uh, Azuma because writing that story, and I just want you to know, I thought of you when I'm writing that story <laughs> where Murtak is sitting under the ring, swinging <laughs> a pole around and missing people, um, that... That gave I-Star an in with Azuma and with the Titans that I have been utilizing in my own promotion to a great advantage for this character because it helps to define him even more and then might answer the questions, you know, what's the new vibe? Are they going to be there next year? Are they going to be disbanded? Are they going to join other groups? What's going to happen? And, you know, that's that's another issue that sorts itself out through playing 2138. Well, and it also, it gives you a fun element, too, of uh, Titan Power, who we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, he could be like, I star, you're on our team. Why are you hanging out with them? You know, like they're yeah, they're yeah. the tight. You could have like a little friction in there, too. So, yeah, this is he I think out of all the I mean, I love all the new vibe, but this is my character. And I'm, I'm super mm. excited to explore. Uh, I had in my fed Shane is the interplanetary champion. And he just said, this guy looks, I'm going to give him a shot first thing. So the first match uh, mm -hmm. was him against Shane. He didn't do as well as I thought he was going to do, but, um, but it was like, like Shane kind of like respected him, you know, like, just yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I can see, you know, you're, you're, I can see why you're here. Um, well, our next, I, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I pulled off one of those issues too. And I will wait to talk about it when we get to the character. If okay. I still remember. Okay, great. Well, um, here is Mr. Everything. And uh, just when I first saw this art, I think I tweeted at you. It looks like the, the Dark Menace's evil brother with a goatee, you know, like Star Trek. Like, yeah. um, And I thought maybe that was his secret or whatever. But yeah. uh, this is a fun character. And he actually just won my Galaxian Championship in his second ever match because he was in the spotlight and Diva gave him a title shot and he upset the champ. So... Who was the champ? Uh, Grandmaster. Grandmaster Ooh. had just won a triple threat. Ooh. Oh my so, my! Yeah, so it was a pretty. It was. It was, and it was a decisive win as well. It wasn't just like well, you know a, what he did that for me with interplanetary with fist. It really surprised me. He just got offense from the start and never relented. So I guess he's kind of an unpredictable character. He can get on a hot streak and maybe get on a cold one. I'm, I'm going to find out. Yeah. Well, and, and I've seen many people kind of compare him a little bit, and maybe this wasn't your intention, but just seeing the card, comparing him a little bit to Bret Hart, just that he's not a big guy, but he's mm -hmm. a really good wrestler. That's what he is, yeah. Yeah, that's the chip on his shoulder. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I find this, if a person likes to do side stories, 
I'm doing that with him as the interplanetary champion that he's like, like the honky tonk man did. He's <laughs> turning it like into his belt and he's turning it into glamor and attention and over the top with this proves how great he is. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll definitely explore that, too. He just, my last card, he won the Galaxian Championship, so he'll have lots of things to say uh, now that he's that. Um, moving on to uh, pre previously mentioned Titan Power, and we've got some great alternate artwork for this. Um, when you sent me these the, the early concept drawings, I noticed that Titan Power didn't have a name. He was just sort of masked Titan. Um, how did you decide on using Titan Power as, as the name? Was that just to tie in with Nexus and Billy Joe Boxer? It turned out, yeah. You know, um, struggling with names is <clears throat> another, you know, every now and then, you, uh, Apex was the name I knew I was going to work with from a year ago. So that was easy. <laughs> but sometimes I Star took forever, Titan Power did. It just takes a while to feel comfortable with a name for me. And uh, I went through so many iterations. And then somehow that, and there's an original drawing. Uh, somehow the uh, the tag team name came to me, and I thought, what a good slap in the face that is to use that. Now, this was one of the early renderings of Titan Power, which I, I didn't want to go in this direction. And uh, you see that changed. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a super, super fun character, um, and it's fun to have uh... – you know, like you said, guys with chips on their shoulders. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I'm not going to let you. You know what, what? What was nice about this set, too, is if you're introducing a new Titan, you they have to kind of fit into the group identity. And you're already kind of identifying a lot. You're letting the group identity do the personality work for you. Here, I created, and I felt really good doing it, and I took a lot of time doing it, five truly distinct people that don't have to be anything other than whatever their story is. So I made Titan Power a guy that, you know, not only does he have these chips on his shoulder, but when he talks, he rambles. It's just one of those personality quirks yeah. that you have to cut him off. He doesn't have that presence to be a great interview. He just wants to ramble. Uh, I, I tried to make each of the new vibe be a truly unique individual. Well, and I love that in the book because I think the first time you see Titan Power, he kind of says like, well, I'll tell my story later. I'm not going to talk about it. But then once he gets going, he's yeah. like, you know, yeah, like Diva's like, all right, thank you. For, <laughs> right. You know, uh, so, yeah. And uh, the final member uh, is uh, Zulfikar, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and yeah, Zulfikar. Well, you know, there is no correct and incorrect. But I, I say Zulfikar, but Zulfikar, I might wind up saying it that way. <laughs> Well, we'll get into Kraken, Kraken all, yeah. all over again. Yeah. Um, but this is a fun, fun character. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely because uh, I always in my Fed, I it was great that he came into feud with Shane because I have Shane ride a horse to ringside. So then it was fun seeing this Whoa. card to see like, oh, well, now we've got another guy. They could have a real they could have a horse match or something. I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah. So talk a little bit about this character and, and how you came up with him. Uh, I've been I've been reading a fair amount of uh, Middle Eastern uh, spirituality and fiction, and uh, I read a book called The Tale of the Four Dervishes, and I liked the way the story was written uh, from a purely writer's point of view, and um, <clears throat> I liked the vibe, and I, I wanted to capture that vibe with this character, um, a, a mysterious figure. Uh, to me, it's not obvious whether he's a hero or a villain. He thinks he's a hero. But, hey, you know, the real world, man, Hitler probably thought he was a hero. Right. Um, <laughs> the problem in real life is there's a lot of gray. And uh, so I, in my fed, he actually challenged Helsin because Helsin is a dark character. And what I did, now I'm alluding to this from what we were talking about about 10 minutes ago, Helsin defeated him, and Zulfikar got on Malif. That's another one I don't know how to pronounce. Malif, Malif, pointed that sword at um, Helsin after losing and said, you passed the test. Now, 
Therefore, everybody has to interpret that their own way because Zulfikar doesn't speak a lot, but it probably means he now accepts Helsin as a hero based on their battle. And because uh, on my next, I haven't scheduled his next match yet, but, oh, wait a minute, I did. He then went after Demon Godsend, which made some sense. I think I did that. I'm not positive. Now that I'm thinking about it, I forget. But he usually goes after the same people Helsin goes after. Um, well, and I'm, I'm excited down the road, uh, just cause I, I'm still, as I said, in the first, uh, first few cards of, of the year, uh, I, I think a fun matchup will be him and Saber cause they both have swords to, uh, maybe there's some kind of sword fight or something. I don't know. No, that's sword true. Fight rules, uh, you know, to see them square off against each other. You know, a leap is stun rod would be kind of a way of mimicking that. Yeah. 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 It's just a lot of fun. And I, it, you know, it's like. Oh, great. And, and uh, you know, Catfight has Maggie at ringside and you can have the horse at ringside. It'll be a, a big menagerie. Yes, a there. menagerie. Murtak caught in the middle. Um, I, you know, it'll just be a, a ton of fun. <laughs> Um, well, the other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, 2138, is um, you had a bonus item. Uh, and that is the little uh, ticket to uh, a card on Demos. There it is, uh, holding it up right I now. always have it at ringside. It's It was my ticket to get in. Um, yeah, and, you know, last year you had uh, the, the, kind of the, the war plans and the and the map and everything. Um, are you having fun doing these little bonus items? And, and do you think that they will continue? Yeah, I'll never force it, you know. Uh, but if something comes to mind that fits yeah. now last time i thought was i liked it a lot because it was a lot of stuff it all made sense i liked working on all of that i love this little ticket it looks kind of real and yeah. then i and um it, it it's a good way of signifying the new new direction the the promotion's going as well as the cool idea of having a ticket to an event so yeah now it's i love Anything that's like from like a real thing from the world, I always, you know, it's like, yeah, you could have a T-shirt, but to have an actual thing from the world, I, I just think it brings it up a level, you know. Me too. It, it, yeah, it, I agree. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Well, uh, another thing I want to ask about the storyline was, um, and I really loved this, was that there was a pretty big exodus of people from the GWF this year, including. Big names like Endgame and Kill Prey, Wolf and Slide Drury. Was it hard deciding who would stay and who would leave, or did you find it easy? Like, okay, these guys have had their time; they can they can cycle out. You know, it really was easier than it sounds. Just like you said, we, we, yeah. I, I thought some people had worn out their welcome continually trying to come up with a new angle was forcing it. Slide Drury and that group may return someday. You never know. Uh, Wolf is, you know, let's face it. A wolf is probable to come back at some point. That's just what he does. Yeah. And I think everybody, you know, would be, people would be disappointed if he didn't. Uh, I think Kill Prey might really be done. Uh, but, and some are storylines, and I won't say which, of course. Well, and the, um, the other thing was that, you know, we had 11 new cards come out in this set. And the first thing I always do is I, I sit down and I organize my Fed and I organize all the cards and everything. And we have 11 new cards, but 19 cards got taken out of uh, of the Fed. Do you prefer like a leaner Fed that has a has a smaller roster? I do. Yeah. And sometimes that's been hard to avoid when you're constantly bringing in new people every year. And uh, but I, I I think that it, it 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 it's harder for people to get lost in the mix if you've got fewer people in it. I think the storylines can be intense because they're more interrelated. So th that's my preference, yeah. Well, and the final question I'll ask is uh, Flanch. He, <laughs> he was he was not mentioned in the handbook. Is he still is he still around? I, I mean, I have him that he's still accompanying them uh, to ringside. But uh, in storyline, is he still coming out with Tempest and Hyla? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was an oversight. I I overlooked Flange. I'm so busy trying to get everybody else that matters. Somehow I missed that Flange. <laughs> it needed to be said that he was still there doing his thing, but he is for those people who are worried about that. Well, and I I just think like man, the merchandising opportunities for Diva. <laughs> yeah, you know, know. Talk about stuffed animals and and uh, you know squirt guns. I don't know whatever. Well, you know, you know yeah, she might have dropped the ball on that. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> but branching off of this, because I did ask you about that on Twitter, um, you mentioned that, you know, Diva said no managers at ringside, but you were mentioning that you do still have managers at ringside. Um, when you were writing Diva saying no managers at ringside, did you know that you were not going to follow that that rule? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I might have even forgot I wrote it. It's <laughs> possible. I wanted there to be rules, but I didn't want them to be ironclad. I want promoters to always have their option. Right. So we're de-emphasizing teams. That doesn't mean that you don't have teams at all at this stage. Uh, it, it's up to you how to, how to do that. I just did Titans versus Conquerors, eight-man elimination on my Galactic Wars as a special event that we don't usually do, but when you do it, then it stands out. Um, so yeah, I, I still, and I don't have managers there all the time, but I often do. And Diva's often at ringside when the new vibe is out there because she's trying to finagle things right. to, to favor them without seeming like she's a villain doing it. You know, it's like yeah. I said, she's in this weird middle ground area. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, thank you for, for, for talking to us about 2138. I have one other question that's not Champions of the Galaxy related, but I wanted to ask you. We have had recently, I mean, in the past year alone, just some of the best Legends of Wrestling sets uh, mm -hmm. that have come out. And just, I mean, the most recent one, we got Sergeant Slaughter in there. I mean, holy cow, you know, Mark Henry, all these guys. Um, are you playing Legends or, or will your Legends Fed be coming back uh, with, uh, with all these great sets that have been coming out? Now it finally has a chance. Uh, I'm not teaching as often now. <clears throat> and this set is done. You know, I finished writing this. So that opportunity presents itself. In fact, I had them out recently asking myself, you know, well, I, I'm a big faction guy. I guess that's always going to be me. So I'm asking myself, who's in what faction? How can I, who's going to even be in the promotion now? So yes, the answer is yes. It'll probably make a comeback. Excellent. Well, we're looking forward to it. Tom, I want to thank you so much for taking the time uh, to chat with us today and uh, being on the video uh, for our second annual um, Champions of the Galaxy discussion. I do want to send a shout out to Crossbones and Wayne on the message boards for submitting questions for this interview. And Tom, just thank you so much for being here and uh, being on the on the show. No, thanks, Grant. I enjoy talking to you. And maybe the third annual will be from Arizona. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, talk to my wife about that. We'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care. Thanks.